How valuable can a 1976 nickel be? In this video, we will talk about valuable nickels you should know about right after this. Hey YouTubers, this is J and B. And welcome to our JB Coins family. We're all about coins and currency. We have new videos every day and are here to help you either start your new collection, expand an existing one, or maybe find that one valuable coin that could change your life. In this video, we will look at the 1976 nickels that you should know about. The nickels struck in 1976 are, in our opinion, overlooked and not getting as much attention as they should. The main reason is the year 1976 being a bicentennial year for many coins, where the U.S. Mint released a different design for them. This didn't happen on the nickels struck during the bicentennial coinage era. They were minted with the same design as previous and following years. Therefore, back then, many were looking for bicentennial coins and not paying any attention to the ordinary coins like dimes and nickels that were struck in 1976. They were not put aside like bicentennial quarters, for example. So finding them today in nice condition is challenging, and they're bringing a nice premium. The 1976 nickels were struck that year at all three mints, the Philadelphia and Denver struck regular business strike coins, while the San Francisco mint struck proof coins for collectors. The 1976 Jefferson nickels were struck in a nickel copper composition and should weigh five grams. Now this weight is very important if you're looking for errors on coins, so try to remember the basic weight of coins you are searching. The Philadelphia Mint struck over 367 million coins. It's a huge number. They won't bear a P mint mark, and finding them in high grades is extremely difficult. The highest grade known for this coin is only MS67. Now remember, the grading scale for regular struck coins goes from MS60 to MS70. Also, some regular strike nickel coins might have a full step or FS designation. The FS designation for those new to the hobby means that they are going to have at least five separated steps or lines at the base of Monticello. And the coin needs to be struck in at least MS60 condition. And this designation applies only to regular coins struck for business use, not proof coins. Now, for those who watch our videos, we're sorry we sometimes repeat basic definitions. But please understand that someone who's new to the hobby or watching our videos for the first time might not know these terms. This designation always brings extra money to any nickel. Going back to the 1976 nickels, this one in MS67 grade with full steps and sold at Heritage Auctions for $4,025. Wow, super nice money for a nickel in that grade. There's only two nickels that were graded by PCGS as MS67. So the low population makes them very valuable. The situation looks very similar with the 76 nickels struck at the Denver Mint. The Denver Mint struck an even larger number of nickels that year, over 563 million of them. They will bear a D mint mark, and the highest grade known is also MS67 but with only one example graded until now by PCGS. Interestingly enough, the owner of that nickel is holding on to it. 
so it never got sold. Many collectors do collect only the coins in the best grades. So this coin is possibly in the hands of this type of collector. As for proof nickels struck at the San Francisco Mint that year, they do bear an S mint mark and were sold for collectors in proof sets. Surprisingly, only about 150 exist in the best grade, which for proof coins is proof 70 decam. Remember the difference. MS applies to regular business strike coins, while PR applies to proof coins. So, in PR70 decam, the best possible grade for proof coins, this coin sold at auction for $342, which is a lot for proof coin. If you're watching our videos, you should know by now that proof coins don't usually sell for a lot, usually only a few bucks. So before we share with you some incredible errors on the 76 nickels, we want you to remember this date and look for them. Buy 1976 mint or proof sets if you don't have any in your collection. Obviously, you can't buy them from the U.S. Mint anymore, but there are plenty of them on the secondary market. Now you shouldn't pay more than about $10 for a mint set. And look at the other coins that you'll get in that set as well. All the bicentennial coins are there. And remember, you're looking for P and D nickels in that set in MS67 grade or higher. Like we said, this nickel is not getting attention as it should and you might possibly find a nickel in an even better grade. Even a half grade higher, which would be MS67 plus, it would bring amazing money. The 1976 proof set costs on average around $12. So if you decide to look for an S mint mark nickel, don't overpay. And now about their amazing errors. The most common, believe it or not, is the 1976 nickel struck on a Philippine Centimos planchet. We'll share only two examples here, but a large number of them exist and they are still being found in circulation. This first 1976 nickel is struck by mistake on a 5 Centimos planchet. It received a low MS grade of MS60, yet it sold for $862. The next 1976 nickel is struck in error on a one centimo planchet. It graded MS62 and it sold at Heritage for $822. Now, to find this type of error, you need to weigh your coins. That's why at the beginning of our videos, we're listing a normal weight of the coin presented in our videos. As you can see, the weight of this error is also listed on its slab. And in this example, it's 1.2 grams. The next error is a 1976 proof nickel struck on a one cent planchet, graded proof 63 by NGC. This great error sold at Heritage Auctions for $2,640. The next error is not only struck on a wrong planchet, but it's also struck off center. This cool error sold for $763. And the last error we will share with here with you is extremely cool. It's the 1976 S nickel obverse impression struck into the center of a clad Ike dollar planchet. Look at both sides of this coin. How cool is this error? There is no grade on the slab, but of course the weight is listed. And this super cool coin sold at Heritage Auctions for $13,200. There are many more. We just wanted to share with you the coolest ones in our opinion. The bottom line is, 
Look for the 1976 nickels. Check your change, buy sets, and weigh all of your coins. If you do buy the 1976 sets, look for other amazing coins in them as well. The video about bicentennial quarters is linked at the end of this one. And we have a question for you. Did you expect the 76 nickels to be that valuable? Please let us know in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. So we hope you liked this video and found it helpful. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe so we can create more videos for you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.